Hi everyone. I heard what happened today and I wasn't sure how to best help out, so I thought I'd try and reorganize the lectures to make them more coherent for everyone that missed it today uh, and for anyone that would uh, like to catch up. Um, Alright, so today we had an intro to the, the next part of uh, hemo hematology and we talked about first the five most common, uh, sorry, just the five uh, leukocytes. So we have neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. And that's the order from most abundant to least abundant. So in the PowerPoint, as you start, you'll see that we, they have percentages. Um, so first, we went through one concept, which I don't have on this concept map, which I've made. The concept we went through first was, if I say you have 60% neutrophils, and you only have three neutrophils out of five, it's the exact same thing as if I'm saying you have 30% neutrophils if you only have 3 for 10. So you have to uh, correct for this. And the way you correct for that is you multiply your percentages by your total white blood cell count. And that would first. Uh, then we talked about uh, leukocytosis. Now leukocytosis, the definition is it's an increase in white blood cells. And I'm starting up here. All right. So leukocytosis is an increase in white blood cells. Now, what were the white blood cells again? In order from most abundant to least abundant, there was neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. So that makes sense. If we have a leukocytosis, it's going to be increasing in those. Now, if we increase each one, we're going to have a separate name for that. All right. So there's five of them here, and they're all are down here. And so let's start with the first one. All right, so again, leukocytosis, an increase in white blood cell. That's just the definition. First one, neutrophil. If you increase in neutrophils, it's called neutrophilia. All right, neutrophils and philia means love, so the love of neutrophils. All right, so what causes a neutrophilia? Almost everything will cause a neutrophilia, stress, uh, tissue hypoxia, inflammation. The one we're going to focus on is infection, right? And this makes sense. If you remember back to I and I, what happens, what was, what was one of the first things to attack a foreign body was in neutrophils, all right? And since they're the most abundant ones, they're going to proliferate the easiest, all right? Now, if we have an infection, which is causing the neutrophilia, there's three things we want to look at, all right? And these three things are granulation, and neutrophils are made of granules, so it makes sense that the granulations are going to be killing something and they're going to be darker, right? Uh, Dole body, which is theorized just to be a rough endoplasmic reticulum, and a left shift, right? Now, a left shift is when you release immature neutrophils. So if you have an infection, you want to get as many neutrophils made as possible so your bone mar marrow even pushes uh, younger neutrophils. It's kind of like if you're in war and you start a draft and you start sending younger and younger uh, guys out to war, right? So, again, leukocytosis is an increase in white blood cells. The first one is neutrophilia, and a lot of things cause it. The one we focused on is infection, and that's by... The way to tell that is granulation, dole body, and a left shift, all right? And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what those are. Here, you'll see the granulation. They're just darker because they're actually doing their job. Here, you're going to see the dole body, which is just this white smudge, all right? And the left shift, again, was you're releasing immature neutrophils. All right, so the second uh, lymphocyte, leukocyte that can be increased is lymphocytes, and that's called lymphocytosis, all right? And it makes sense that in kids, what will cause us? Well, viruses. If you remember, viruses, you need T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes to attack them, to kill them, right? So that makes sense that what will cause lymphocytosis? Viruses in kids, all right? If you're older, elderly, what causes it is these lymphoid neoplasms. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into that in the next video, so don't worry about that right now. All right, so the th moving on, the third leukocyte that can be increased is a monocyte, and this is called monocytosis. All right, now uh, what you really need to look into is the causes for monocytosis are dangerous. All right, this is acute myeloid uh, lymphoma, chronic myeloid lymphoma, and uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. All right, we're going to go into this in the next lecture as well. All right. 
but it's also important to know that these are dangerous. So if you have monocytosis, you really need to look at what is causing it, right? The fourth leukocyte that can be elevated is eosinophil, and this one is just for allergy. Nothing really important about it. Uh, the last one that can be elevated is a basophil, and this is called basophilia. Again, this the causes for basophilia are really scary, so you must investigate what is causing the problem. Okay? So here you have that. Bad underlying reason. Please investigate. So, let's quickly review the first half of this whole lecture. Leukocytosis, increase in white blood cell count. There's five leukocytes we have, in order from most abundant to least. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophil, and basophil. If neutrophils are elevated, it's neutrophilia. Look for infection. We look for granulation, dole body, and left shift. If it's lymphocytes that are elevated, lymphocytosis. In kids, it's most likely a virus. In old people, it's going to be some kind of lymphoid neoplasm. Third one, monocytes. If they're elevated, monocytes, remember, make macrophages. Monocytes elevated, you need to look at what is the reason. Why is this happening? Four, eosinophil is for allergies. Five is basophilia. And this, again, just like monocytes, you have to look at what is the reason. Okay, so that takes us to the first half of the lecture. And now we're going to go ahead and start the second half. Just has leukocytosis, I guess. All right, so we already know what our five leukocytes are. Only ones we learned about were neutrophils and lymphocytes. So let's go ahead and take a look. If your neutrophils are decreased and they're less than 500, this is called neutropenia, all right? Now, neutropenia, if you're less than 500, you have to be careful because you can get infected with your own flora. It's kind of a slap in the face, but so that's just something to worry about. Now, agranulocytosis is if you have no neutrophils, all right? And the way to remember this is neutrophils have granules, and your A, A is always absent, so it's A granules, all right? So let's go back. Leukopenia is a decrease in white blood cells you have neutrophils and lymphocytes that we're going to look into. So if neutrophils are decreased, it's called neutropenia. If you have zero neutrophils, it's called agranulocytosis. All right. Now what is causing both of these? Well, where are the neutrophils made? They're made in the bone marrow. So if you have something wrong with the bone marrow, so aplastic, aplastic anemia is the bone marrow is not working. Marrow replacement could be any kind of those cancers, which we're going to go into next. All right, and you can have autoimmune things. You can have your spleen kicking out too many neutrophils or something attacking your own neutrophils. Uh, the last reason you can go to neutropenia is if you have a severe bacterial infection and your neutrophils are actually working. All right, so now let's look at lymphocytes. If you have a decrease in lymphocytes, and, and you'll see a couple other things on that slide. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, now we're going to go into, that's why I actually went over here, we're going to go into the, th we're now going to start leukemias, all right, and there's three things he wanted us to know about leukemias, all right, and I'll state them, I didn't write them on that uh, concept map I made, uh, the first thing with leukemias is it's a malignant, not making these cells, but if it is making all these cells, most of them are useless, so what happened is you have a functional deficiency. And the third thing is your death is usually caused by you're lacking something or some tissue is not functioning well, all right? This will make more sense as we go into the next lecture. They use two systems, acute and chronic, and they use myeloid and lymphoid, all right? Acute and chronic is just what it sounds like. It's time, all right? And myeloid and lymphoid, you need to go back and think about the stem cell. You have the hemopoietic stem cell, and it makes a myeloid cell, and it makes a lymphoid, all right? Lymphoid will go ahead and make a B and T cell, while myeloid will go ahead and make your red blood cells, your platelets, your monocytes, your eosinophils. all right? So it's just a way to specify which lineage it's going down towards. All right, so, and you can mix and match these. So if we're describing a leukemia, and leukemia is, the, is a malignancy in the bone marrow, all right, we can have an acute, I mean it's quick, it's a quick onset, it's happening quick, all right, so it can be acute leukemia, but we need to specify, is it in the myeloid lineage or is it in the lymphoid lineage? So it's acute myeloid or it's acute lymphoid. 
Same thing goes for chronic. We need to specify, is it in the myeloid lineage or is it in the lymphoid lineage? Okay? So we can end up having acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoid leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, chronic lymphoid leukemia. Don't get intimidated by all the words. Just go ahead and break it down. Acute is quick, myeloid is a myeloid lineage, and leukemia is just the general disease of the bone marrow. Okay. All right. So that go ahead goes ahead and ends the video for this uh, lecture, the intro, and um, we're going to go ahead and start the next one, which goes into all the different leukemias.